Two. Are you ready, Christelle? Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, for being here, for taking the time to watch. And I want to remind everyone uh, why I was gone for a moment. Because a lot of people missed the postings and wondered where I had gone. Well, I can tell you where I had gone. Um, throughout the course of life, as it were, uh, things happen. And the, the computer that I'm working on fell with a, a mighty crash to the ground. A uh, complete accident done by uh, the beautiful behind the scenes Queen Christelle. And it had the entire show down for a rather substantial period of time while I had to wait for a new cord to get here. And I mention this because I'm going to show you here my Patreon page. Now, I have, um, I forget exactly how many videos I have up, let me check, I know, I know it's way in excess of 700 videos, but I have a very large number of videos up, let me check, oh, it's not on right now, because I'm in the other channel, but suffice to say it's very high, I want to say like 720 some, look at that friends, there was a nobody, as in zero dollars, being posted for the documentaries, the Fukushima updates, the hours upon thousands, if not hundred thousands, of hours spent in video, video reproduction, rendering, uploading, social networks, so, uh, social networking, um, searching up the articles themselves. Researching all of that brings in zero dollars and zero cents. So, when anything happens whatsoever, the show is down. We own that crappy camera, which everybody complains about the audio, and we own the computer, of which everybody complains about the video. Well, friends, I don't mean to start it off in a dour mood, but it is near Christmas, so consider it a joyful message that if you want this show to grow, I've got the talent to give you a good show. I've got the talent and the skill to bring you the news and the reporting in a way that you've been used to because you've learned to trust the show and you've learned to trust me when I give you the news well I need you to do me a favor and trust me that if people don't help me the show is not going to grow as a matter of fact there may be less and less show postings particularly when things break so please consider donating the patron site is right in the description below you can also donate through PayPal at the correct views at hotmail.com if you'd like to give a one time payment now, I don't mean to eat up the beginning of the show with that, but I thought that it needed to be said. In, uh, it needed to be said because if not, you will not continue to get news such as this. At least not as readily. Statesmanjournal.com. The Fukushima radiation has reached U.S. shores. Um, this is not the first time that this has happened. This is yet another massive wave of it coming here. Okay. I'll let this play in the background while I'm doing it. Um, this is not the first time that this has happened. This has been going on here since the Fukushima disaster. Right off Oregon Beach, it says, for the first time, seaborne radiation from Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster has been detected on the west coast of the U.S. That's not true. As a matter of fact, we found it here much sooner, just not in the uh, levels that they were predicting were going to come here because they said that it wasn't going to get here as quickly as it did. But we know that it did. And the way that we know that it was from Fukushima is due to the breakdown time of radionuclides. Certain radionuclides only come from nuclear power plants. And those radionuclides in turn decay at a certain rate. So if you pick up a number of radioactive elements that have decayed in a certain fashion or by a certain degree, to put it into layman's terms, 
then you can detect pretty much where it's coming from. And since there has only been one major accident that is going to go ahead and release this level of radiation that would be detected across the ocean, then we can narrow it down to Fukushima. It's kind of like when you have only one dog and someone eats your homework or your slippers. Uh, you pretty much you know which dog it was. It wasn't the fish. Um, cesium one if it is, I want that fish. Cesium one thirty four, the so called fingerprint of Fukushima was measured in seawater samples taken from Tullamook Bay and Gold Beach in Oregon. Researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute are reporting. What's really sad about that is for those of you that are 420 friendly, uh, a lot of the uh, finest comes from Oregon. That could be, that could, that, you, you know what, there, I don't think there's a, he, there's been proven that there's not a huge lung cancer concern with the marijuana despite what they used to believe. However, if you're if you're dealing with some of this, it could be rather it could be a bit bad. Oh, I love when pages refresh like that. So when you're looking at these sorts of things, you have to realize where it bioaccumulates at and where it gets into the ground at. And what does it get into the mushrooms? Does it get into the marijuana, if you will? Uh, do, what does it get into? How is it getting into us? Um, it's also again this is not true. The first time cesium-134 has been detected on Canadian salmon. We already know that there was not one, as in zero, not one, bluefin tuna from the Pacific Ocean that did not show massive signs of radiation poisoning. We also know from Dana Dunford, look up beautiful girl Dana, about the massive die-off all over up and down Canada. So we, we know that, uh, that, that what the Statesman Journal is reporting here is a bit skewed. But the uh, Fukushima Inform Project, led by the University of Victoria, chemical oceanographer Jay Colin is reporting, in both cases, levels are extremely low. Now, we're going to get to that in a moment here. This is another, uh, another uh, look at the, the article in another publication. Let me show you why this is bad. Okay, you want to see why it's really bad? This is, uh, this is it right here. We go to health healthvermont.gov and there's a number of things here that we're going to look at but the, the bottom one is how can it hurt me meaning cesium because I typed in safe levels of, of cesium because after all if we're being told that these levels are safe then there should be a bunch of numbers that come up to tell you that you know you can be around this much cesium and it'll be fine but you know what that's not what I found here's what I did find External exposure to large amounts of cesium-137 can cause burns, we know this, or even death, and it can increase the risk. Exposure to, now there is a period there, or even death, uh, to lar large amounts, period. Exposure, as in any, it's a different sentence. Look at this. That's very, very, very important, because this is how you learn to read between the lines on such things. Large amounts of CS-137 could cause burns, acute radiation, sickness, and even death. Period. Exposure to CS-137, that does not mean large amounts, can increase the risk for cancer because of exposure to high energy gamma radiation. Now listen, if it would have been large amounts, then the sentence would have said, hey, now pay attention to this, this is how they get you. External exposure to large amounts of C-137 can cause burns, acute radiation, sickness, and even death. As can, no, that's not what it says. It's a separate sentence. Did you get it? That's because this accumulates in the body more and more and more. If I was to tell you that I was putting a, a drop of antifreeze into a glass of Coca-Cola and I was going to give it to you, would you drink it? Well, I'll tell you what. That drop of antifreeze isn't going to do anything to you. There are toxins in there. And yet you'll eat the food out of there knowing that there's cancerous radiation in it. And unlike antifreeze, which unless you're extremely unlucky at such a small dose probably wouldn't give you any more than the runs if it was even noticed. Um, depending on your weight. No, don't try it. Um, you've got to say it. There's people dumb enough. Um, with this, once it gets into the body, it does not leave the body. It stays there for good. 
that is very, very important for all of you to know. It doesn't just leave the body. It continues to stay in there and create tiny nuclear reactions that when triggering in relation to other cells in the body can cause those cells to mutate or not die off properly. And that is one of the things uh, that can lead to devastating cancers. Depending on the rate of the metastasization, it may not be curable. In most instances, it's not. It can be ingested or inhaled, and it allows radioactive material to be distributed into the soft tissues, especially the muscle tissue, exposing those tissues to beta particles and gamma radiation and increasing cancer risk. The half-life is 30.17 years. Now, that's important because we're going to get to a story here in a minute where they talk about wanting to bring people back to Fukushima, five years after the accident. Well, the half-life of cesium-137, not to mention the millions of years involved for plutonium and uranium, the half-life is 30.17 years, so it probably wouldn't be a good idea to move there for at least 60 years just based on the cesium risk alone. However, we know that it's not just the cesium risk that we're worried about. Friends, all of this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. If you have not been to Sticker Junkie, make sure that you go there. When you get there, get your stickers. They'll be there in three to seven days, so you can still get your orders in time for Christmas. And the best part is, when you're done, type in correct views or the correct views, and you'll be getting an even bigger discount because you're a listener of the show. Guys, got a couple more stories to get to here. Um, Tom, but that's great because nobody's on it. I am, but nobody else is. Fukushima News. En. Sinmasa.com. Fukushima Nuclear Power Plant. And Japan and India sign historic nuclear deal. This is a short one. Negotiations for the nuclear deal between the two sides that have been going on for a number of years, but progress on these has been halted because of political resistance in Japan after the 2011 disaster at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Well, let me tell you what. The only plan that you're going to make that's going to have any kind of help to the general population of not only Japan and India, but of the world, is to avoid nuclear power. And there's a reason for that. Nuclear power causes cancer even during the times that they are running what is said to be appropriately when they're not malfunctioning. They have routine releases of things like tritium and America into the air. Those lead to what Helen Colercott, who is a doctor, calls routine cancers. Oh, it's just a routine cancer. Do you understand? This stuff stays in the environment. Therefore, this happens even when they're working well. We've been seeing all kinds of earthquakes around the Indian area in India. Do you think it's a wise idea to continue nuclear power then? We have seen another significant earthquake near Japan, and yet they are still pushing for nuclear power there. This is what happens. This is what the Bible meant when it said that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not that you are hoarding money necessarily, although that would certainly be a uh, reference, but the acquisition of money at any cost, for the good of the bottom line, for the good of whatever power it is that you have attained or deals that you have made, even in light of the facts that would prove to the contrary, you continue to damage the health of people as a whole. That is what this does. Not to mention the India-Pakistan problem with many of the radical sides of Islam posing a rather, rather significant threat to a nuclear power plants in India. Um, not so much India towards Pakistan in terms of terrorism, and if that's not politically correct, I'm sorry, it's true. And that brings us to... Oh, the dumb-dee of the day! Yes, the dumb-dee of the day, of course, we hinted at it earlier. Five years later, this is from Vice News, Japan wants to move everyone back to Fukushima in the spring. 
All right, now here's what that's like. It's like saying that you accidentally mixed ammonia and bleach in a room with no windows and then in a panic knocked the bucket over. The smell and the toxin that makes mustard gas, by the way, don't do that either. Um, the ammonia in bleach mustard gas is filling the air. It melts the lung tissue, by the way, among other things. And they basically kill you if you're around it. And no, it won't be a pleasant death for you, those of you. I'm a cutter. For those of you that have gone that route, it, it's not going to be pleasant. Um, better off cutting. Don't do that either. Um, here's what we've got here. Let's pretend that five minutes after it happened, we say we're going to go back into the room and continue cleaning. That is the exact analogy with the exact same toxicity that I am speaking of here. Which is why, of course, is getting the well-deserved dumb of the freaking day. There's going to be the dump cap of the month, too. That's either going to be Wednesday or Thursday night. Uh, which, of course, Thursday, Friday morning, depending on when it's going live, where you are. It's 1.14 here. Japanese... <coughs> pardon me. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has announced plans to clean up Fukushima, the site of a massive 2011 nuclear disaster, it moved former residents back by spring of 2017, but not everyone wants to go back. Look, if you do want to go back, you're an idiot. It's not possible in my lifetime, Katsutaga Itagawa, former mayor of Futaba Prefecture, intelligent, the mayor knows. He told Vice News, the radiation doesn't go away that easily. Radioactive materials remain hazardous for hundreds of years, but just five years have passed since the 2011 Fukushima meltdown. Japan's effort to clean up more than 600 square miles is estimated to cost the government over $180 million. Friends, listen, there should have been an evacuation, not just of the area, but quite possibly of the better part of Tokyo. And you're going to find these words to be painfully true when the cancer rates and thyroid cancer rates and heart disease issues in uh, adults and children and people skyrocket. People in general. You'll see it. And you'll remember that I warned you. And you'll remember why uh, they just got the dumb the other day. Friends, uh, thank you very much for listening. Again, please donate if you can. Because if you don't, we are like a sinking ship here. We really, really need your support. It's Christmas time. You've already got the credit card out. And come on. Zero, zero, zero is the number of patron subscribers who would give at least $5 a month. So friends, oh, please consider doing that. Also, don't forget the correct views at Hotmail.com. You can make a one-time payment in PayPal with that. Thank you, friends, for tuning in. Get ready, like I said, for the dump cap of the month, either uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, or it'll be uh, Thursday night slash Friday morning. Good night, friends. God bless.